Welcome to Chapter 3, Topic 3. This is a cell envelope. We've talked about the inside of the cell, we've talked about the outside of the cell, now we're here to talk about what separates the two. Remember that prokaryotic cell envelopes are very unique, and this is one of our first steps to differentiate between bacteria in the laboratory. And that's precisely why this topic's important. This is our primary tool for identifying and classifying bacteria. So it's very important to understand these differentiations really quickly so that you can move on in lab and move forward identifying your bacteria. So what is the cell envelope? We have three parts. Not all cells have all three, some just have two, but it's important to be familiar with them. We have the cell wall, the cell membrane, and the outer membrane. So it goes cell membrane being the closest to the cytoplasm, cell wall in between, and then the outer membrane for the last set. One of the structures that's really important for the envelope is peptidoglycan. This is a mesh-like substance that's created from repeating sugar chains mixed in with proteins. It creates a really strong fiber for the outside of the cell. And what it does more than anything else is it provides strength for the cell to keep it from rupturing when it's in a really aqueous environment where the solution, where the otherwise the cell would rupture. So that's what's really important about it. It's kind of like plant cells, how it keeps plants from rupturing, they just stay turgid. This is the same idea with, um, with bacteria cells. So the first way we differentiate cells in the lab is gram positive and gram negative cells. One of the easiest way to remember these is the PMP rule. Gram positive cells stain purple, whereas gram negative cells stain red. So let's first look at our gram positive structure. Gram positive structure has a really thick peptidoglycan wall. You see that there on the slide? This is what takes in the dye, and we're going to talk about how that dye works on the next slide. It also has various acidic structures found within this peptidoglycan, and the acids help the cell maintain um, the wall. And under, underneath that thick peptidoglycan is the cell membrane, which is that phospholipid bilayer that, we've talk, that you guys have talked about when you talked about eukaryotic membranes and things like that. So that's pretty much a standard um, cell membrane down there and uh, membrane bound proteins within it. Now the gram negative is more like a sandwich. It is two phospholipid bilayers, the outer membrane layer and the cell membrane, sandwiched by a thin peptidoglycan wall. The outer membrane has LPS or lipid polysaccharides found throughout it and LPS is an endotoxin that can induce fever and shock reactions within the body. So L LPSs can be very harmful to the body. So make sure you get a good idea about this. Be able to draw these even. That'll really help you understand the differences. So let's talk through how gram staining works. Gram staining, we start with crystal violet stain. So you're going to put purple stain on both cells because in the lab you won't know what you have. Then you will provide, or, and that'll get absorbed by the cells. Both of them will take up the stain for the first step. Then it, you add Gram's iodine, and what this does is it grabs onto that crystal violet and helps lock it into that peptidoglycan wall of the Gram positive cell. Then what we do is we add some alcohol. The alcohol re dissolves that outer membrane of the Gram negative cell, leaving the Gram positive still purple intact, but the Gram negative is now clear. So then when we add the safranin dye, the Gram negatives will take it up and appear red under the microscope while your gram positives will remain purple, just like we saw. Don't worry about it too much if you're feeling a little stressed about that. You're going to get a lot of practice in lab, but this just under, helps you understand how that stain process actually works. Now, we just talked about how there's this golden rule of gram negative, gram positive, they're all one or the other. Well, that's not quite the case. There are cells that don't have typical cell walls. These are mycobacterium and nocardium. These pathogens are responsible for some diseases such as tuber tuberculosis or leprosy, so they're pretty nasty little guys. And they have a structure similar to the gram positive cell wall, but they have this waxy outer layer that doesn't allow them to be stained the same way. So instead we have to use a stain nose and an acid fast stain. I don't want you to worry about that too much right now. Um, we're not going to do it in lab. I just want you to be familiar with the fact that there are some cells that aren't gram positive or gram negative. We can also manipulate the cell wall, and the bacteria can do it to themselves as well through a mutation process. By doing that, we change the way the wall is, and they become these um, protoplasts or spheroplasts, and they actually lose their peptidoglycan. And this allows us to do different research projects with us if we choose. And what we and we call these the L forms when they are linked to an infection. 
So just be aware that we can modify these or they can modify themselves depending on the environment. The last structure, remember if we're going from outer membrane to cell wall, we're at the cell membrane. This is a phospholipid bilayer. It's made of two level layers of phospholipids, which have a, a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. And what they do is they sandwich so that the hydrophobic groups are together and the hydrophilic groups on the outside. These form naturally within any kind of aqueous environment. In prokaryotic cells, this serves as the reaction for generation of ATP and respiration because they don't have the organelles that we do to do that. Just as importantly as, as this, it's a major place for the cell to regulate what comes in and out. This serves as a selectively permeable barrier and prevents um, crazy things from coming in and out of the cell that would also help the cells rupture. So it's really important to watch that. I've added an extra video on membranes if you really want to learn more about the structure of this uh, cell membrane, but don't worry about it too much. Just be aware of the basics of it. And that this is the end of this topic. So let me know if you have any questions about it, and we're going to go through these in class. So that'll help you out. So let me know if you have any questions.